So what's going on guys, it's JM, it's Speedboxing. Make sure you subscribe to my channel before you click on any of my videos. Also comment below in the comment section if you guys have any opinions in what I'm saying in any of my videos. Like always, it is appreciated if you guys could drop me a sub or two on my channel. So, number one mandatory to the WBA heavyweight title, Lewis King Kong Ortiz, is now saying he will take legal action with the WBA if he doesn't get his WBA title shot next against Anthony Joshua. And basically, I'm going to break the situation down to you. Lewis Ortiz was asked a favour by Eddie Hearn, Anthony Joshua's promoter, and by the WBA to basically step aside to let Anthony Joshua and Vladimir Klitschko fight for the WBA super title on the grounds that he would get an immediate title shot afterwards against the winner. And after going over it with his team, Lewis Ortiz agreed to this. And now the WBA and Anthony Joshua and his team seem to be stalling on this. And also the IBF have butted in as well, saying that their mandatory should be enforced first. And now because Anthony Joshua has a lot of money behind him, um, they're trying to come up with a special permit to let Anthony Joshua have one more voluntary defence before having to defend against Lewis Ortiz. So that could be because the Vladimir Klitschko rematch could happen later in the year and because Klitschko isn't a mandatory challenger, Lewis Ortiz is, they have to have a voluntary defence. And Lewis Ortiz is not happy at all by this situation. To quote Lewis Ortiz here, he says, I'm ready for the biggest fight of my life and it's not with regular opponents but with no other than the world ranking of the WBA. Look, if they think I'm going to fold, they must be smoking some good shit. I've come too far. I've struggled too much in my life and starved one too many times in Cuba as a kid, eating only bread and water to stop now. I endured too much having to cross the dangerous waters of the Gulf to make it to the US for freedom, for me and my sick little girl to now get bullied by anyone. Look, boxing is a sport, not just a business, and it's not fair to me if they allow Joshua to get special treatment because someone is dishing out money. My team convinced me to let the WBA move on with the resolution because of lawsuits that were coming at WBA President Mendoza. So I agreed on the WBA terms so they told the world and me that I was next, no matter what the IBF was asking. Remember, I was the interim champ. The only reason for not firing Ustinov was they didn't want to drug test and that was not in the bylaws of the WBA, so I was cleared by my attorneys. All I want is to be treated fair. I'm not asking for what's not mine. So basically Lewis Ortiz is saying he's going to take legal action and it is true, Anthony Joshua does have a lot of money and backing behind him so he's the kind of guy who can get all these special permits and stuff like that and the IBF as well, they're very very strict when it comes to mandatories like you have to defend your title with the IBF straight away if you've got a mandatory or they're just going to strip you we saw it before with Tyson Fury even though he couldn't defend against Glasskov, who was the mandatory at the time, because he had an ironclad rematch clause in the Vladimir Klitschko contract, and he had to rematch Vladimir Klitschko, but the IBF still stripped him. They were a very by-the-book um, organisation. They're not like the WBC and the WBA, who allow people to have step-asides and stuff like that. And I think Lewis Ortiz should get a shot. At the WBA heavyweight title. What amazes me is that Lewis Ortiz didn't even get a shot at the WBA regular title because Shannon Briggs and Freza Quendo got a shot at a WBA title before Lewis Ortiz. Shannon Briggs, a 45 year old man who hasn't fought a pulse for about 10 years almost, well, since he got absolutely battered by Vitaly Klitschko. And you got Freza Quendo, who hasn't fought since 2014 when he lost a fight against Chagayev. And he's also about 43 years old. And Lewis Ortiz, the clock's ticking for him now. Because, like I say in all my other videos, I don't think he's 38 years old. I think Lewis Ortiz is in his early to mid-40s. And this guy has had to sacrifice a lot to get a name in boxing, to get into this position and I understand him not wanting to give it up and just wanting a fair chance because this is a guy who came from Cuba, a country that is a communist country that doesn't allow their boxers to become professional boxers. So you basically have to escape 
your own country basically just go across the pond and escape the country just so you can extradite to the states and become a professional boxer and get your professional boxing license so Luis Ortiz has had to put up with a lot Cuba is a very poor country and the only thing really for a young boy to do in Cuba to have any chance of doing anything with their life is to become a boxer that's why they have these special boxing camps in Cuba and stuff like that so Luis Ortiz has had to put up with a lot of stuff in his life and he's finally got himself an opportunity at a WBA title so I understand him being pissed off that barriers keep getting put up for him because he's had barriers put up with him his whole life so yeah I hope Luis Ortiz gets a shot at a WBA title even if it's against Anthony Joshua or not even if Anthony Joshua has to vacate the title because this guy's been waiting for a while now and I'd like to see the Luis Ortiz Anthony Joshua fight I think that'd be a very good fight like that's a very competitive fight in my opinion like no guy's a clear favorite in that fight but Eddie Hearn recently did an interview on IFL TV saying that he doesn't think the Lewis Ortiz Anthony Joshua fight is a big draw. He don't see much money in that fight. So I think Eddie Hearn thinks this fight is high risk, low reward. And you get that a lot with Cuban fighters. We've seen it with Guillermo Rigondeaux in the past. Like Carl Frampton didn't want to fight um, Guillermo Rigondeaux because he said it was high risk, low reward. There was no money in the fight. Because it's true, a lot of Cuban fighters are usually with smaller promoters and stuff like that and there's not much money behind them and because they're very talented boxers big names don't really want to fight them because they could possibly lose the fight and then not make much money than they would in other fights against less dangerous opponents so it's a very messy situation comment below your opinion it's jm it's speed boxing